So today, parabolas. Oh, I have part of this, part of the notes not showing. But up at the top, read with me. It says, we have previously studied parabolas. And when we did, we viewed them as quadratic functions. You could probably tell me about that fast. What's the parent parabola equation? You know, the parent graph is y equals x squared. When you graph y equals x squared, hopefully you have this one memorized. You know that it is a parabola. Goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and it opens up like this. Well, it's a function because it passes the vertical line test. And if instead of y equals x squared, we graph y equals negative x squared, you know that it's a parabola. It causes it to open down instead of up. And it still passes the vertical line test, so it's a function. All of the parabolas we've talked about so far have been functions. And we wrote their equation as y equals x squared, or f of x equals x squared, or maybe we had a few other terms, ax squared and bx and c. And if we needed to know the vertex, we could find it by doing negative b over 2a. You remember this? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes we completed the square and we wrote it in standard form. Multiplier times x minus h squared plus k. hk showed us the vertex. Always in the past, when we talked about parabolas, they've been in y equals x squared form, one way or another. But parabolas that open left or right, now instead of just talking about parabolas that are functions, we're going to talk about parabolas that open to the left or to the right, and they're not functions because they fail the vertical line test. So when you talk about parabolas that open left or right, you can't use function notation to talk about them. So instead, we're going to talk about them from a geometric standpoint. So here's what we've done with the conic sections. We talked about a circle. A circle is a set of points. All of the points are equidistant from one point called the center. Then we talked about ellipses. We talked about two fixed points, the foci. The definition of an ellipse is a set of points such that if you pick one point on the ellipse and you measure point to focus one, point to focus two, add that distance, you'll get a number. Pick a different point, point to focus one, point to focus two, add that, you'll get the same number. So the sum of the distances is always staying the same. Hyperbolas, the difference between the distances from point to focus one, point to focus two, subtract, that distance stays the same all the time. So for all of them, the definition was, a circle, a set of points, an ellipse, a set of points, a hyperbola, a set of points. A parabola is a set of points in a plane, and all of the points are equidistant from a fixed line called the directrix and a fixed point called the focus. So any point that I pick that's on this parabola, if I measure from point to focus and point to directrix, those distances are equal. Pick a different point. If I pick this point and I measure point to focus, point to directrix, these distances are equal. In fact, here's a special one. If you pick the vertex and you measure from the vertex to the focus and the vertex to the directrix, that distance is the same. In fact, we're going to give it, give it a, a letter, P. P represents on parabolas the distance from the vertex to the focus and the vertex to the directrix. So P is to parabolas, kind of like A is to ellipses and hyperbolas. You kind of have to study it and know what it is. So P is going to represent a distance from vertex to focus and vertex to directrix. If you turn over on your notes on the next page, oh, there are things that I'm going to ask you to discuss, and I gave you a whole bunch of formulas, but remember, I haven't been really keen on wanting you to have to memorize a bunch of formulas. I'm wanting you to know facts, like P represents distance from vertex to focus, vertex to directrix. But when you discuss a parabola, I'm going to want you to know, basically, we're going to look at two standard form equations. We're going to look at the ones where the X is squared, like it always has been, we're going to either have x squared equals 4py, or we're going to have y squared equals 4px. If the x is squared, it opens up or down, because that's what you've always been used to, y equals x squared, your parent graph. So if it's x squared, it's going to open up or down. You'll, you'll either have a parabola that does this, or a parabola that does this. But if the y is squared, 
the parabola is either going to open left or right. And, and these are not supposed to look like hyperbolas. I'm just telling you, those are the ways it, it can open. And it might not just be x squared. You might have a shift. It might be x minus h squared equals 4 times p times y minus k. Or you might have y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h. So when you discuss parabolas, I want you to give me standard form equations. I want you to be able to identify the vertex. It's going to be h, k, or in this case, 0, 0. I want you to be able to identify the vertex and the focus and the directrix and um, a focal width. And we'll talk about that one in a second. If the directrix, if the, if the parabola opens up or down, the directrix is going to be a horizontal line. If the parabola happens to open left or right, the directrix is going to be a vertical line. So you have to remember things like this. Horizontal lines have equations that look like y equals a constant. Vertical lines have equations that look like x equals a constant. Turn over on the next page in your notes. scenarios that you can have when you graph parabolas. So on all of these, we're going to make an assumption. We're going to suppose on all of these that P equals 3. And then you got to know, what does P give you? P is distance from vertex to focus, vertex to directrix. Um, so in this case, if this parabola opens up, and the value of P is 3, and it hasn't shifted any to the left or to the right, if I'm discussing this one, I will say the vertex is at 0, 0. And to get to the focus, it's always going to be inside the parabola, in the bowl, then the focus, I have to go up 3, so the focus is 0, 3, and the directrix is the line Y equals if you go 3 below 0, 0, you're at y equals negative 3. On this one, if this is a distance of 3, but the parabola opens down, the vertex on this one is at 0, 0. In order to get to the focus, you have to go down 3, so the focus is at 0, negative 3, and the directrix is that y equals positive 3. On this parabola, it opens to the right in a positive direction. The vertex is still at 0, 0. We're still assuming on all of these that p equals 3. If I go a distance of 3, to get to the focus, I have to move to the right. So what would this, how would we name this point? out 3 first, uh, so it's going to have to be 3, 0. And then when you go 3 the other direction to get to the, to the directrix, the directrix this time is a vertical line whose equation has to be x equals negative 3. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And on the last one over here, if you have a parabola that opens left, the vertex is still at 0, 0. But to get to the focus, if you go a distance of 3, the focus has to be in the branches of the, or inside the parabola, then this time the focus would be negative 3, 0. And the directrix is 3 to the right of it. The directrix is never going to go across the, the parabola. So in this case, x equals positive 3 is the equation of the directrix. Now let's go back and talk about what would the standard form equation look like. For this one, the standard form equation would be, because it opens up, it's going to be an x squared equals 4py kind of parabola. But if p is 3, then it'll be x squared equals 4 times 3 times y, or x squared equals 12y. That's the standard form equation in this case. In this case, Really, it opens down. So the direction that I went, I went 3 in a negative direction. So I, when I write the equation on this time, it's going to be in the form x squared equals 4py, but in this case it's going to be x squared equals 4 
times negative 3 times y because this parabola opens in a negative direction down. So this equation would be x squared equals negative 12y. The parabolas that open to the left or right don't have equations that are x squared equals, they're y squared equals. So these equations are going to be in the form y squared equals 4px. In this case, I had to move in a positive direction, so we're going to consider p to be a positive 3. So y squared equals 4 times 3 times x, or y squared equals positive 12x, whereas on this one, I have to go from vertex to focus, I have to move in a negative direction. The equation is in the form y squared equals 4px, but this time it will be y squared equals 4 times negative 3 times x or y squared equals negative 12x. Are you okay? There is one more thing that we're going to name when we talk about hyperbolas. We're always going to talk about how wide does the, does the parabola open. And so we're going to describe it by talking about its focal width. And someone decided to give this width measurement. If you line up with the focus and go right through it, someone decided that this is called the lattice rectum for the parabola. And I'm going to want you to be able to give me the endpoints of that segment. It's always going to be parallel to the directrix. So the focal width, and I gave you this in a formula on the front. This is something you have to study and memorize. The focal width is always going to be absolute value of 4p. So in this case, it's going to be absolute value of 4 times 3, or absolute value of 12, or just 12. So it's going to be 12 wide. So if you want to, if it's 12 wide, half of that width is going to be on one side of the, of the, vert, of the focus and half on the other side. So it's going to be 6 to the right and 6 to the left. And so this point right here, if the focus was 0, 3, then this point is going to be negative 6, 3. And this point is going to be positive 6, 3. Whereas on this one, if I ask you to give me the focal width, again, it's 4p. So it's, it's 12 wide right here, but this time, if the focus was at 3, 0, and we got to be in line with the focus, this time we go out 3, up 6, so 3, 6, and 3, negative 6, would be the endpoints of the lattice rectum. So let's do an example. Turn over to the next page. I know I went pretty fast on that, but we'll do an example and it'll make some of it be, make more sense to you. So example one, you have x squared equals 16y. Parabolas come in two forms, either x squared equals 4py or y squared equals 4px. So which variable is squared on number one? x squared. If it's an x squared parabola, then you got to remember, okay, an x squared parabola is just like the parent graph. y equals x squared, those kind of parabolas that we've always done before, either up and up or down. So on this one, this is in the form x squared equals 4 times p times y. Since x is squared, that means the parabola opens up or down x squared means the parabola opens up or down and then to decide which one it is you're going to have to figure out the value of p well 16 and 4p have the, are, the, are equal 4p, our 4p value is 16 which tells us p is 4 and because p is 4 a positive p value means the parabola opens in a positive direction. Positive p value 
means the parabola opens in a positive direction. Which directions are positive? Up or right. Positive p-value means the parabola opens in a positive direction. Up or right. And we've already decided an x squared parabola opens up or down. So which way does this parabola open? Up. Up. There's nothing that's been added to the x squared or the y squared that would cause this thing to shift. So where's the vertex? Zero, zero. So come over here and give me an origin, because I didn't give you an origin. Plot the vertex at zero, zero. We'll label points in a minute, because sometimes your ordered pairs get in the way of your graphs. We'll label them after we're finished. In order to get to the focus, if, if we know that our parabola is going to open up, and the focus has to be in the branches or in the parabola, inside the bowl, then I have to go which direction with four? Four up, right? So one, two, three, four up from there gives me the focus. What, where is that? How do you name that ordered pair? Talk to me. Zero, four. You've got to study this and know this. So P is four. P gives you the distance from vertex to focus and vertex to directrix because the definition of a parabola is a set of points where any point on, any point on the parabola is the same distance from, from point to focus, point to directrix. So it's also four to get to the directrix. If I go four the other direction, one, two, three, four, then that's where the line's going to show up. It has to be a horizontal line so that it doesn't go through the, the parabola. So the directrix is y equals negative 4. Vertex goes in a box. Focus goes in a box. Directrix goes in a box. And the other thing that we need to finish so we can draw an accurate parabola is how wide should we make it? The focal width, and this is something you have to study and memorize, I, have it, I gave it to you on the first page, the focal width is always absolute value of 4p. Our p value is 4, so absolute value of 4 times 4 means absolute value of 16, so it's going to be 16 wide. It's 16 wide when you line up with the focus. So if you line up with the focus and you make, you know this thing is going to be 16 wide, it's not 16 all on one side, you've got to split it equally. So this point was 0, 4. If I split the, the width of 16 equally, I'm going to have to go 8 this way and 8 this way. So line up with the focus, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That puts us from the vertex out 8, up 4. And the other one is out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It'll be negative 8, 4. And then you can draw the, draw the parabola. I'm a fat parabola. And this segment right across here is called the lattice rectum or the focal width. We know that this width was 16, well, it's 16 wide across here, eight, 8 either direction. And we're going to name those points in points of the lattice rectum, but I'm going to let you call it just E, P, L, R. The end points of the lattice rectum are part of your discussion, negative 8, 4, and positive 8, 4. Everybody good? Okay, I'm going to erase and move up. On example two, what do you notice that's different? Y is one squared. So what does that tell you? If the Y is squared instead of the X being squared, it's going to be a left or right. So that's the first thing you notice. On this one, y is squared. So y squared, all y squared parabolas means the parabola, y squared means the parabola opens left or right.
and it's our job to figure out which one. Well, it's given to us in standard form. In fact, there's been a shift this time. We have y minus k squared equals 4 times p times x minus h. 4p equals negative 20. So what's p? Okay, p equals negative 5. The fact that p is negative tells us you move in a negative direction to get to, from vertex to focus. A negative p value means that the parabola will open in a negative direction. Negative p means the parabola opens in a negative direction. So now we can figure it out. Y squared parabola is open left or right. A negative p value makes it open in a negative direction. So which one is it, left or right? Left is the negative one of the two. So if this parabola opens left, then we need to discuss various things. The first thing we've got to identify is what is the vertex? Be careful. Can you tell me the vertex? Three, two, no, negative two, three. There Sorry. you go. There you go. The common mistake, and it's easy to do, you've got to be careful, is to say 3, negative 2, because we're just used to going from left to right. But remember, you have to look for the horizontal shift first. So this says shift left 2. So the vertex is at negative 2, and this says shift up 3, negative 2, 3. Put it in a box. That's part of our discussion. And then let's put it on the graph. I didn't give you an origin, so I want you to give me one. And let's see. We want the vertex to kind of be in the middle of the graph. And we've got to shift left 2 up 3, so I'm going to say there's a good place for the origin about right there. Then from here I'm going to go left 2, actually I probably could have, let me scoot it over a little bit more. So if I go left 2 and up 1, 2, 3, I'm kind of close to being in the middle of the graph with the vertex. Which way do I need to move from here? to get to the focus. Well, think about what we said. Which way is this thing going to open? It's going to open to the left from the vertex. So remember, if the focus is going to be left, got to go left. So from the vertex, go left. One, two, three, four, five. There's your focus. Where is that? If the vertex was at negative 2, 3, and we've gone 5 more past it, where are we for the, for the focus? There you go. Negative 7, 3. Put that in your discussion. Directrix. Horizontal or vertical? Because it can't, if the, if the, if the parabola is going to open to the left, the, the directrix can't cross it. It's going to always be, in, it's always going to be parallel to the focal width, to the lattice rectum. So, hey, give me the equation of the, of the directrix. Uh, x equals negative 3, or positive 3. There you go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this direction. x equals 3 is the directrix. Put it in your discussion. And then we've got to draw it accurately. So we need to know the focal width. You have to just study this and memorize it. The focal width is always absolute value of 4p. So absolute value of 4 times negative 5 means absolute value of negative 20. So how wide is this? 20. 20 wide. If you line up with the focus and you know it's going to be 20 wide, then we're going to split that 20. 10 of it will be on one side and 10 on the other. So from negative 7, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Where is that point? From the origin, get me to there. Got to go out. 
negative 7 up, 3 and 10 more, so yeah, negative 7, 13. And then the other one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, where is that one going to be? It's up negative 7, up 3, and then down 10. So 10 below 3 will put us at negative 7, negative 7. Remember, those are called the end points of the lattice rectum. They are at negative 7, positive 13, and negative 7, negative 7. So put those in a box. Now you can draw an accurate parabola. Draw it to scale. It's kind of another fat parabola that opens to the left. On the next example, the one that I have does not match yours, so we'll figure out what does match yours. Your nuts don't have this y squared, right? Instead, I think your notes have x squared plus 8x, so I'm going to change this, and this is going to become x squared plus 8x minus 4y plus 8 equals 0. You know this thing is a parabola because it's, an, it's a general form equation. It's not in standard form. You can't immediately look at it and tell me the vertex. But you do know that it's a parabola because it's in the form ax squared plus by squared plus cx plus dy plus e equals zero. But there's not a y squared. The b value is zero. Anytime there's only one variable squared, it's a parabola. So we have to complete the square to write it in standard form. We know that we, we want this thing in x squared equals 4py form. But maybe not just x squared, there's going to be a shift. x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. So we need to complete the square to write the equation in standard form. And the standard form we're going to go for is the x squared kind, but we know that there's going to be a shift, so it's going to be x minus h squared equals 4 times p times y minus k. So when we get finished, this is the form we want it to look like. So I know I need to group together all of the x's, x squared plus 8x, and I know that there's going to be just the right number that I add to this that will cause this to be a perfect square trinomial that will factor as something squared. Well, then, after I have something squared on the left, I want everything else on the right. So that means I need to add 4y to both sides and subtract 8 from both sides. And whatever number I add here, whatever I do to one side, I'm going to have to do the same thing to the other side. So what is the number that I need right here? 16. Half of the middle and squared. Add 16 here. Add 16 on the other side. That means this is now a perfect square trinomial that you know how to factor. It factors as x, be careful about the sign, plus 4 squared equals, on the other side, 4y, negative 8, plus 16, will give us plus 8. In standard form, we always want y by itself, so we have to factor something out. What should we factor out? If we factor out a 4, then we'll have left y plus 2. Once we're here, we need to decide how is this parabola going to open. We know x squared parabolas always open up or down. 
what's the value of p? If I have x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k, 4p equals 4. Well, if 4p equals 4, then that tells us p equals 1. 1, remember, p gives you the distance from vertex to focus, vertex to directrix. Because it's an x squared parabola, it's going to open up or down. And because p is positive, it's going to open up. And the vertex, let's see, we'll discuss over here. Tell me the vertex. Talk to me. Say again, Tucker. Negative eight, negative two. Or negative four. There you go. Negative four, negative two. Vertex is at negative four, negative two. Put it in a box. And then we need to put that on the graph. Let's label it. If we're going to shift left 4 down 2 and we want it to kind of show up in the center, let's see. Um, I'm going to go about right here. So left 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2. That gets my vertex pretty well in the middle of my graph. But I want to see your origin. So there's my 0, 0. And we said it's going to open up. Well, if I know that I'm going to have a parabola that opens up and the focus always shows up in the, in the bowl of the parabola, then how far do I move from vertex and which way? Up. Up how far? One. Yeah, because P is 1. P gives you the distance from vertex to focus. So, up 1. And the directrix, here's the vertex. Here's the focus. The directrix is the same distance the other direction. So a distance of one the other direction, and it has to be a horizontal line. What's the equation of the directrix? Well, let's, let's go back. We'll label. The, the vertex was negative 4, 2. I'm sorry, negative 4, negative 2. So what's the focus? Negative 4, negative 1. So what is the equation of the directrix? Y equals negative 3. So those go in your discussion. The vertex, negative 4, negative 2. The focus, negative 4, negative 1. The directrix, Y equals negative 3. And then the other thing that we need to have to graph it accurately is focal width. How wide is it? Focal width is always absolute value of 4p. So that's going to be absolute value of 4 times 1. What are we going to get? Line up with the focus. This thing's going to open up. If you line up with the focus, then and this thing is going to be four wide, you're not going to put all four of the width on one of it, so split it. You'll have two this direction and two the other direction. And those are the endpoints of the lattice rectum that let you draw the, the parabola. And now let's label this point. To get here, we got to go out negative four and two more, so that one is negative six, same height as the focus. I'm going to label this as negative 4, negative 1. And then negative 4, negative 2. And so this one is going to be, help, what? Negative 2. Good. And those are the end points of the lattice rectum, how wide it is, the focal width. And so label those, negative 6, 1. Negative, two, uh, negative 6, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1. Put those in a box. Are you okay? So experiment on the last one. The last one was kind of like your ellipse homework when you had to, you were given some information and from that information you had to come up with the equation. So while I erase, work on number 4 for a minute. Yeah. 
question or input for you. So here's what we know. We're looking for an equation. Find the standard form equation of a parabola that has these things going on. We have a focus at negative 3, 4 and a directrix at y equals 2. So we need an origin. We're shifting left 3 up 4. I'm going to say here would be a good place for the origin. Then left 1, 2, 3 up 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the focus. And the directrix is at y equals 2. We know y equals lines are horizontal. So here's 0, 0, 1, 2. This is what y equals 2 looks like. How is this parabola going to open? Which one, though? If it opened down, it's going to go across that directrix. It can't ever cross the directrix. It's got to have a vertex in between these and open up because we, the focus always goes in the bowl of the parabola. So the parabola will open up. And if it opens up, parabolas that open up or down have an x squared. It's going to be, the equation we're going to try to write is going to be in the form x squared equals 4py. That's something you're going to have to memorize. Or maybe not just x squared and 4py. Maybe there's going to be a shift. So if it's not x, it'll be x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. We're looking for an equation that's in this form. Tell me what I need to know to fill in the blanks for this equation. You need to find Vertex and what else? P. P. So, how am I going to find the vertex? Find this in between the focus and the um, directrix. Direct. Exactly. It's it's always the same distance. That's one of the definitions from point to focus, point to directrix. So, vertex to focus is the same distance as vertex to directrix. So, the vertex, in other words, is going to be exactly halfway between those two things that we have graphed. Well, from a height of 2 up to a height of 4, that's, a, that's a, dip, a distance of 2. So cut it in half. One away from the, from the focus will get you to the vertex. Can you tell me what the vertex is? Negative 3, 3. Mm -hmm. Negative 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3. Negative 3, 3 is the vertex. So what will I do with that negative 3, 3? I've got I to gotta write my equation so that it will shift left 3. How do you make it shift left 3? So that will make it x plus 3 squared equals 4 times, we'll come back to p, times what else? y minus 3 because it's got to make it shift up 3. Now what about the p value? What, what's the definition of P? The distance between the focus and the vertex. Vertex to focus, vertex to directrix. How far is it both directions? So it's 4 times 1 times y minus 3. We would just write it then as x plus 3 squared equals just 4 times y minus 3. Let me give you another one. Um, times 1 because... Because P is the distance from vertex to focus and vertex to directrix. So here's another example. Find the equation if I give you this information. There is a parabola that has a focus at negative 2, 5, and a directrix at y equals 1. I'm going to give you a couple more so you can practice these. If the focus is at negative 2, 5, and the directrix is at y equals 1. What will help you the most is a little sketch. We'll pretend you can just, you can just make a little sketch on yours. If the focus is at negative 2, 5, I've shifted left 2 up 5, so I'm going to say here's my origin, left 2 up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
So there is focus at negative two, five. Directrix, y equals one. How high is it from one up to five? How much, how much distance is there? Half that distance, halfway between there, you're gonna find the vertex. So the vertex has to be halfway in the middle, a distance of two up. Where is that vertex? Negative two, three. And what's the p-value? Two. Mm -hmm. If you know the p-value and you know the vertex, and you know that this thing is going to open up, if it opens up, it's going to be in the form x squared equals 4py. But it's not going to be just x because the vertex is shifted, so it's going to be x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. Fill in the blank. To make this thing shift left 2, it's going to have to be, help me. Plus 2. X plus 2 squared equals, what will it be? 4, four times two. 2 times y minus, three. y minus 3. That'll make it shift. So we're going to write it like this. X plus 2 squared equals 8 times y minus 3. Let me give you one more. This one's a hard one. You ready? So I'm going to leave this one for you to work on. Um, write the equation of the line. If I tell you the focus is at 3, 2, and the directrix is x equals negative 4.
but not just y. We got to make it shift up two, so that'll make it y minus two squared equals four times. 3.5 times, not just x, but x, help me, it's got to shift, the vertex has to shift left a half, so that'll make it x plus one half, or four times 3.5 turns into 14, so y minus 2 squared equals 14 times x plus a half. Okay. Here is the